here's what I've been doing with this show for the last six months or so, or at least the last couple of months since football season's over. We'll decide what a top 10 list needs to be, and I'll go look for lists online, what are the options it needs to be, and I'll put it out for voting. And that's what I did the other night. I thought, this shouldn't be that difficult. I'll just take it upon myself, and I'll go look for sitcoms. Of course, I can't take the blame here. It's not my fault. I went and saw somebody else's top 50 sitcoms. And I thought, I'm not missing anything. All of the options are available. So I put it out to our friends, and immediately they start going, where's this? Where's that? Why is this not an option? This is my favorite show. And I left so much stuff out. Here's what we're going to have to do, guys. We're doing a top 10 sitcoms that Terry thought of this week. And next week, we're going to do top 10 sitcoms that Terry didn't think of. Because that's the only way to get past this. Because I left a bunch out. But like I said, I blame it on everybody else, not myself. It's not me. Can't be me. (laughs) Or the fact that there are 792 to date when you use the category sitcoms. You're a dumbass. You're a dumbass. That is uncalled You're a dumbass. That is uncalled for. Let's move well, on it, with the list. It is stipulated that I'm a dumbass, and I make an <laughs> ass of myself on this show, so she was clearly directing that at you, because we don't need a sound effect for me. Okay, okay, okay. Number 10. <laughs> the Jeffersons. You ever watch The oh, Jeffersons, Andrew? Maybe an episode or two, genuinely. This one's yeah. a little... And and it's not older. to be funny. I call you old, but this is for people that are slightly older than me. I was born in eighty five. Pondwater so must have w- voted for this. I, I he put it number one clearly. Uh, now I know the moving on up, and I know some of the references and that sort of it's thing. Um, and I know it paired with Archie Bunker, right? Uh-huh. Do I have that right? Yeah. That it, it was it was with Edith and it Archie. Was a spinoff, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I get that part of it, but I, I I'm not a viewer, so you're going to have to tell me. What was great about the Jeffersons, other than the I few mean, it segments was good. I've seen. He was he was he was an angry guy, and um, you know he had he had a neighbor that he called Honky all the time. So, <laughs> so that was pretty days, funny in the seventies. You know, yeah. <laughs> Number nine, Scrubs. You ever watch Scrubs, Andrew? One I of have, my favorites. Uh, yes. Have I ever watched Scrubs? Newbie? Please. Listen here, Priscilla. Um, no, greatest bromance in television history is J.D. and Turk. Uh, there is no bromance better than those two doctors. I love Dr. Cox, as you might imagine. Um, Best character on the show. Bob Kelso. Guess who has two thumbs that doesn't give a shit? <laughs> yeah, Bob Would Kelso. you imagine... <laughs> That that has probably come out of my mouth once or twice. I know y'all you know, once or twice here, a week. Here is my objection to Scrubs right now as it sits. Nine appears to be just a little too low because I know where I put them and they were top five, homie. Well, you got to remember, this is not only number nine. This is number nine of 10 plus who knows how many, <laughs> right? This is not just number nine, but I love Scrubs. It was unfortunate though that um, it kind of was it suffered cancellation the after you know, the writer strike. The writer changed strike. to a different network, and it was a different feel, and it just wasn't yeah. as good, and it went away. It's one of those shows you never know what would have happened had the writer strike not happened. I want to say it's the first six or seven or eight seasons. I think I've got that right, Terry, where they were solid. And then you had the writer strike. Then you had the network change. And then, if I may, it was like they needed to take it out to the pasture and shoot the horse. I mean, they just needed yeah. to find a way to put it out of its misery there at the end. When um, they started having like the interns or whatever that came in, the younger people, they were okay, but it was just a different show at that point. Yeah, and one thing that I love, and I've even, Allison can attest to this, you know, because I do the Bob Kelso line, need a Bahama mama, a lot more Bahama and a lot less mama. <laughs> uh, so, you know, but so many good one-liners came out of Scrubs. 
Um, obviously a lot of good messaging, that sort of stuff. It wasn't all about just medical. And that was the other thing, because there's so many medical shows. If you've got Chicago Med, Grey's Anatomy, um, I just lost one, the, the Resident. I mean, you could start rattling off um, uh, the one with the good doctor. You know, mm-hmm. you start rallying. We, that's a top 10 right there. Top 10 medical shows, 1960 forward. There you go, Terry. We got another top 10 topic. Allison. Write it down. Number I eight. Okay. Will and Grace. All right. Which I watched I'm good some. with that. I mean, yeah. I, I'm going to have more on this later because I marked this one, knowing what's above. Because here's, here's a little bit of uh, making of the sausage. Somebody's got to put the graphics together. So yeah. far, that's been me. So these are not yep. a surprise to me. They are surprised to Andrew. We kind of try to at least have one of us that's surprised. But I've got a note on Will and Grace that we'll talk about later. I do like Will and Grace. I mean, there's some really good characters in there. Love Will and Grace, the snarky woman. She makes me laugh, of course. This is a couple. They're gay, whatever, uh, you know. And they were really the first where you saw that be the prominent role and not a background role. So, um a lot of fun. Another another series. I've seen Scrubs forward to back, backward, forward, forward to back, probably four or five times through. Right. Have never watched Will and Grace end to end. Have never watched the Jeffersons end to end. So this may be giving me something to watch, you know, as you wind your day down, turn some nonsense on the TV. So anyway. Number seven. Roseanne. Roseanne, which is – Kind of a different show than everything else because they showed a house like you would expect to actually live in. And that's yeah. not what you normally see in sitcoms. Yeah. And then, of course, you had the the Roseanne and Dan. and, and They're both the, overweight. Yeah. They both have kids that get in trouble a lot. Yeah. And you Mikes. had Becky, Becky in trouble with the boyfriend all the time. Well, and, we got uh, two different Beckys also, right? The one in the picture here is the original and number three, but we've already talked about Sarah Chalk and Scrubs. She got her yep. start here. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, of course, DJ, as he got older, got into trouble. Darlene. I mean, yeah. everybody had a Darlene as a sibling, it seems. At least I did. I know exactly which one of the three sisters was Darlene. Um but you're right. Blue collar, hardworking, snarky, funny. You know, she works in the diner. I forget what Dan did because it's been so he long. He did a lot I've of different things. I don't yeah. remember what he did at first, but I know that he ended up opening up a motorcycle shop at one point. Uh, yeah. maybe and then they, they both lose stuff. weight. Yeah. And then the way they wrap the show up where she's dreaming that he's alive, but he's not alive. You know, right. the whole. And they won the lottery and all that last season. Bizarre. It was way out there, but they didn't know how to tie it up. Right. And that's the one thing that you see with dramas, you see with comedies, you see with a lot of different shows. They don't necessarily know how to tie the story up and end it. Um, I mean, Roseanne was, I thought Roseanne was fine. Now, it might be one of those shows that I was a kid when Roseanne was, I go back and watch it and I'll pick up a lot more funny or subtle things, you know, yeah. that were that were not so obvious back then when you're a child. You know, because I think they came, were they a Tuesday night show? They weren't part of the TGIF lineup. Oh, yeah. I don't know what night it was. Yeah. Because well, the TGIF. For a lot for me to remember. Which well, buddy, we had at Roseanne. my house, it was like Full House, Family Matters, something and something. And it was TGIF. It came on Nickelodeon. Perfect Strangers. Yeah. Yeah. Channel 38 at the and on the cable provider anyway. See, I can remember stuff. Anyway. Well, TGIF, I remember it. All the other nights of the week. I, I guess Seinfeld and Friends and stuff was on Thursday. Yeah, because it was hard to compete against Friends and Seinfeld. And uh, was it ER that tried to compete against them as a drama at one I point? Think or they on the same I think it was. I think it was. Yeah. Well, we anyway. better quit talking about other shows. We'll not be anticipating something. Number six, Shit's Creek. Y'all fired. Absolutely, positively fired. Shit's Creek is not number one, but it is 1B. Um, yeah, absolutely. Fine. What an idiot. What an idiot. Idiot. Oh, what an idiot. The producer. So I guess that's the producer's me. response to that being number. Yeah. Six. So Shit's Creek, obviously wealthy family. Accountant hasn't been paying taxes. As a rib, the dad bought this little town called Shit's Creek. 
and that's all they they were able to have left. And it's uh, Johnny and Moira and David and uh, oh, I just went blank on the sister's name. Uh, I'm uh, no help to you. I mean, I've seen a lot oh, of the reels and I like those. I've, I've maybe watched two. I know episodes. Alexis. Thank Alexis. you, thank you, producer Alexis Rose. Uh, and and I should know that. That's my bad. Lots of characters, lots of things. A 23 minutes or 30 minute show. It was on Pop TV. Won several awards. Um, uh, even um, Eugene Levy and and um, we'll get to this a little bit later. But Eugene Levy and Daniel Levy, father and son, and the daughter is uh, the restaurant owner um, in the show. Uh, so the three of them work on the show together. But Eugene and Daniel are the actual executive producers, writers, creators of the show. Uh, so it's a lot of fun, a lot of just different entertainment. Um, and I'll get to something that 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 the that came out in the show, but um, just different what relationships, the way they deal with each other. Really good entertainment, not necessarily clean. Uh, David not likes to say what in the actual fuck, clean. and I think it's hilarious. Um, you know, I like any, how you said not necessarily. It, it, it could be, but it's not necessarily. No, it's not clean. Anybody who has ever gotten a text message from me has probably been responded to with a David Rose gift. Uh, anybody. I mean, my bosses, my friends, my family. My I bosses. love David. Um, is I channel David. Okay, I'm that sassy about things. Even but the baseball. Even the baseball came from Shit's Creek. So him and Patrick in season four. But anyway. The uh, it went six seasons, great show, fun show, adult show, not something to probably watch with the children. It's not a real gritty and dirty and violent, and sexy. It's language, it's content. Right. But anyway, these days they can watch it on YouTube anyhow, meaning that sort of thing, not necessarily the show. But what? Great show. I love it. Terry needs to watch it. I need to watch more of it. I need to catch up on that. Yeah. Number five. Number five, the, the office. office. There you go. And this is go. the first show, and you can't see it if unless I'm going to move my camera. I'm going to try to search for something on my wall. Moving the camera, moving the camera. Whoa! And you kind of see it over there. I've got some office guys up here. The office. I've got Dwight, Michael, Pam, and Jim. Now, let me correct this back so you can see me again. Thought I would show you that. But, wow, let's not do that ever again. That was a mistake. <laughs> uh, we may do it for these, but we'll see. The Office. Did you watch much of The Office? Because I love The Office, and I know the producer loves The Office. So the producer can quote The Office. Um and probably could tell you watching two minutes what episode each one came out of and what it was about. Um, I'm not that person. I Most of my office exposure has been on Comedy Central and not in order or yeah. at, um, at the uh, on the reels and the Instagram and the fun stuff watching. the Now, I will watch them. I don't skip them. I think they're hilarious. Um, the bald guy on the right. Uh, he makes me laugh because he is so. Kevin. Oh, uh, yeah, he is horrible. And then He's I like great. Jim. I like Jim, of course. Mm -hmm. um, hard not to like Michael. You know his character that he plays for the shit bag. Um, Stanley is excellent. Yeah, you Stanley. Just got meatball. I, I love great. Stanley. Um, I just watched one on the. Uh, oh, producer on... saying Robert California. Oh, Robert I just California watched... is horrible. I was at the gym horrible. and James. I didn't know James Spader was on this show. Yeah, he's Robert California. <laughs> okay, that's Robert California. Okay, so at the gym, nobody criticized me because that was funny. Yeah. But at the gym, they don't put the volume on, so you can't right. hear the joke. So I like, but I saw it was James Spader with hair before he was Red Reddington, and I'm like, that's fucking James Spader. That's 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 Voltron right there, you know, because he he plays Voltron in the Transformers. It's his voice. Yeah, uh, he came but, after um, Steve Carell left. Oh, okay. You know, they we're trying to see who would be the next boss. And they went through several. You know, Will Farrell did it for a little while. And that was okay. 
Um, Andy, character Andy, who I don't think is in this picture. This was an early picture. Andy was the boss a little bit. Uh, there was this guy, Charles, which is, what is that? Idris Elba? Idris Elba? I don't know. Idris that, Elba, that yeah. Guy. He's a great yeah. actor. So he was the boss. Um, and then they settled on, oh, the, the lady, um, Kathy Bates was the CEO. They got bought out, and she was on there. And then Robert California came and talked her out of her own job. So, Well, Robert California, the episode I saw, um, and Allison will remember this, and you might too, he has him over at his house, apparently, and all of a sudden they're going skinny dipping, and he strips oh, yeah. down, and he jumps in a pool, and Jim takes off, and the other two clowns jump in the pool with him, and then there's this whole why did you run away, et cetera, thing going on. Um, but it was uh, it was funny to me uh, with the uh, with the whole pool incident. But like I said, I, I had never seen him, and so it's a replay on Comedy Central, yeah. and James Spader is the main character. Yeah, that was good. It's one of my favorites. How it ended up number five out of an incomplete list. I'm, it's like, what's in the top four here? I mean, yeah. I did not include all the options. Number four is Seinfeld. Good show. Not I've it never seen every show. never seen every episode though. I but think you I all probably have, have. You have all heard me quote Mr. Costanza. There doesn't matter if it's true, as long as I believe it. So, go Yankees. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to point that out. Costanza works for the Yankees, and the way he got that job was that he said, I'm going to do every instinct I have, I'm going to do the opposite. So he meets, he's going for an interview with the Yankees, and there's Steinbrenner there. And he said, what's the worst thing I can do? So he just lets Steinbrenner have it about all the trades and the, and how he's screwing up the great Yankees organization. And Steinbrenner loves it, and he hires him on the spot. It was fantastic. That is awesome. But yeah, I haven't seen every episode of it. But again, it's things I've seen in clips and segments. And it's just uh, some of this is a function of age. Other is a function of we didn't have cable television when I was a kid. So, And I've just never watched it. So I know you can watch Seinfeld all the time. You can find Seinfeld anywhere. Oh, it's on all you know? the time. Syndicate so, everywhere. TV, internet, Hulu, whatever. You know what I mean. You can, you can watch Seinfeld yeah. anywhere. So. Number three, friends. Friends. The I've other seen a lot of these. I've, you know, I'll be there for you. I mean, it, the show that made the song famous. I, I, the song didn't oh, make man. the show famous. I promise you. Um, but what and a I was cast! An eye full of Jennifer Aniston every time. I, I, I was going to say uh, Jennifer Aniston, David Swimmer, Courtney Cox, Lisa Kudrow, uh, Matthew Perry, uh, and I forget who played Joey. I always forget who played Joey. Um, oh, you had to say that, didn't you? Yeah. Come on, I, producer. I just, I just forgot Somebody's who played screaming Joey. At the radio, screaming at their phone right now. Oh, they, yeah, uh, yelling Matt at us. LeBlanc. You know. Matt, Matt LeBlanc. LeBlanc. Yeah. Yep. So, anyway, I mean, look, that was pretty good, Terry. I ain't seen every episode, and I just rattled them all off, you know. Um, I did just recently see the Vegas wedding episode <laughs> where, where – uh, they want to get married. Rachel gets married to uh, Swimmer, you know. Uh, Aniston and Swimmer Ross, get married. Yeah. yeah, and they got the tat. They got the just married written on the back of his head. <laughs> so, but I haven't seen every episode. But the stuff I've seen, it's funny. It's not like there's anything wrong with it. It's just again, fell in that wheelhouse. We didn't have cable at the time. Didn't have television. Watch it. So, number two is what it is. Cheers. And I'm just going to ah. tell you, Cheers is what's on this other shelf, but I'm not moving the camera. Cheers, Cheers did not. I don't believe Cheers required cable. I think we could get that one with the antenna because I remember Cheers. I remember right. when they brought in Woody Harrelson. I remember when Coach died. I remember Dan. Um, and, of course, they had uh, Diane, and then they brought in Kirstie Alley. Rebecca, yeah. Yeah, Norm. Hey, Norm, you know. Uh, you know what's funny with Cliff me? Cliff goes on Jeopardy and loses. <laughs> oh, that was great. Who are three men who have never been in my kitchen? Yeah. Well, exactly. they've never been in my kitchen. Yeah. So when I was in college, this was before Netflix. You couldn't binge watch stuff. My roommate and I would watch 
um, an episode of Cheers every night on Nick at Night, and they went back to back through the whole series, and we kept watching the whole time we were in college, and we hated Diane at that point. We were so ready for Rebecca to show up. But then when I've watched it in later years, I love Diane, completely mm-hmm. love her character. And I don't know what it was about it back then. I hated her being on the show, but I love her now. One thing that I'm really bothered about when I got these cheers, Funko Pops, there was no Carla. How can you not have a Carla? What the crap? Yeah, she was that's through the whole, great. she was with the whole run, wasn't she? Almost yeah. the whole run anyway. Yeah, because that's Central Danny DeVito's character. wife. Yeah. Yeah. I love Cheers. Excellent. Excellent. And then they're holding beers and everything. I'm not moving the camera, I promise. But anyway. The number one show, you know which one it is. I know which one it is. Number one, The Golden Girls. And you you can't beat The Golden Girls. Nope. Nope. You talk about a show that was clever, smart, cheeky. Um, I mean, you know, you've got the perfect combination of these four women, they all end up living together. Um, you know, Betty White, the airhead, the idiot, the Arthur, the jerk friend that just tells it like it is. Um, her mother, who's kind of both, you know, um, is Sophia. And then, of course, everybody's favorite, Blanche. No, I not everybody's favorite. Not everybody's favorite, sir. Well, you're not, e- you're not even Dorothy, are you? Or no, you're That's not Rose. Not yeah, Dorothy you're Rose. Rose. You're not. You're not even Rose. See, That's my bad. I took. I wanted to take that when I went to Dynamite and I was on the front row. Dynamite. When I went to Dynamite and I was on the front row, I studied the sign rules for AEW, and they will not let you have signs that are not wrestling related in there. I was going to have Betty White's big face on the TV. It's unfortunate I didn't get to do it. I didn't want to lose Betty. I didn't want to have to drop her off right before I went in the arena. Well, this is what I will say. This is what I will say about this. You will never again find four female actresses with the stage presence, ability, vocals, talent, and chemistry of Rue McClanahan, Estelle Getty, Bay Arthur, and Betty White. Those, this is the perfect sitcom. The perfect sitcom. Um, I just sent you guys a reel not too long ago about where Sophia has to bail them out of jail because they get arrested for prostitution. <laughs> and she said, Who the hell thinks you're hookers? You know? Um, but, you know, the, the, you go back and watch it. I watched this show with my grandmother and my mother. So I'm a child. You don't get half of the jokes, like half of them. But you laugh because your mom and grandma are laughing, so you think shit's funny. You go back and watch. These are some dirty women, and this is my kind of this is my kind of thing. Right? They, they call Rue McClanahan a uh, you know uh, they call her a slut, Blanche a slut all the time. That was in the eighties and nineties, and they've got them openly great. calling Blanche a slut, making fun of how dumb Betty White is, what a ball buster Dorothy is, and of course there's Sophia talking about how her boobs hang down to her stomach and everything else, and um. <laughs> You know, but you wouldn't say, I don't think you could make this show in 2024. I 100%, you can't find the talent available to make this show. This, this was serendipitous that these four actresses were be able to come together. I love the Golden Girls. Every, well, I don't know everybody knows. All my friends know. I love the Golden Girls and definitely voted this number one. Although I don't think it's, I don't even think it's a debate if this show's better than the other nine we talked about, because it is the perfect sitcom, in my opinion. That wraps up our top 10, running them down. The Jefferson, Scrubs, Will and Grace, Roseanne, Schitt's Creek, The Office, Seinfeld, Friends, Cheers, and The Golden Girls. That's the first list, because I'm sure you're thinking of something that I left out. 